everybody how you doing today i'm going to do something a little different i'm going to do the question and answers from longwood gardens up here in pennsylvania because i think it's a really cool place to go we'll kind of switch venues around here every time we do a comment or something like that so let's go ahead and get started How you doing everybody? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome. Yeah, we're up here in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. This is where I moved down to Florida from and I really thought it would be a lot of fun to do something while I was up here because Longwood Gardens is definitely uh, definitely a treat when you come up here. It's worth going to and I figured I'd show you around a little bit. Now, with that said, there is a lot of construction going on here. They're doing a lot of re renovation to the place. And as I go around, we'll go through each one of the comments and questions, go to a different place, I'll show you around. Hopefully it's interesting. If you like the idea, put it down in the comments and I'll try to do it different places I travel around the country. But anyway, I'll tell you what I did though. I forgot all the comments and questions are back home. So I gotta go back and get them. I'm gonna go get them and then we'll jump out here to the first place. But right behind me is actually the museum part and this is where you walk in parking lots on the other side and this is I'll just show you the beginning since I'm shooting right now and off in the distance over there is the indoor area and I'll show you around each one of these places and as we go down there are the fountains the famous fountains and then down even further over there is the big bell that chimes all the time. Hopefully I can get that while we're going around. But we'll do a complete loop around here, show you a bunch of the cool places and go through all the comments and questions. I'm going home to get them because I don't remember all of them. Then we're going to get started. I just got back from getting the questions, but I thought I'd better quick orient you to this place because it is really, it's huge actually. And it's pretty amazing. It was originally DuPont's place. And then obviously through the donations and everything else, it got turned into Longwood Gardens. And this is what we have today. But this is a map of the place. And this is right where we entered. And I'm sitting right here. And what I'm going to do is actually walk around all the way around here. We're going to go up and see probably the old house and then come back up to the conservatory which is the indoor area and this is the area where we're doing where they're doing all the construction right here and then we'll go up i'll show you where the fountains are but all this is kind of roughed up in here and then pop out and we'll come back out and hopefully by then we're done with all the questions and answers but we'll try to do one at a different place each time and actually we'll go down to it's like a little treehouse place and that's where we'll do the first one <laughs> let's go Actually, since this is the first time I've done this, I'm going to, unfortunately, the sun's kind of in the wrong direction, so I'm going to be a little dark, but I'm going to walk down this first uh, alleyway here, and you can check that out, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool. I, I, I mean, the whole place is like this. It, it, it's unbelievable, actually, if you take a look at this, the way everything is is manicured, and it's done by a lot of volunteers, which is really cool if you come in in the morning you can I, I, you can see everybody out here working but the first see I got my questions now the first uh, comment or question comes from if you saw the the time that we went to um, Bob Liz and I went to uh, stump knockers the restaurant our waitress Jessie I guess she was actually watching she actually saw the video and she writes hey I'm YouTube famous this is Jessie uh your server that evening and jesse was so nice she actually has been working 15 years as a server and she said it was the first time that she actually forgot her uh she couldn't find a slip for our table and she actually knew that i was going to need it for the end for the the video because i told her that towards the end and she ended up losing it so she actually went back and hand wrote it if you watch the video as a restaurant review she actually hand wrote it so bravo to you jesse thanks a lot for being a good waitress really appreciate it and don't forget to tip your waiters and waitresses now we just walked down the end of this it's gonna sound like i'm getting out of breath because i'm talking and doing this at the same time but all along here there's these little alcoves that are built like this and then you can just kind of go branch off into the middle of nowhere and you'll end up at these little areas kind of like this 
and this is on the way down to the um, the little house that we're going to go to so this is kind of cool and we haven't even gotten to the first place yet and it's pretty amazing I'm gonna run up here real quick as you can see there's all kinds of stuff up there and Mr. DuPont didn't hold back on anything so let's go ahead and we'll take a walk up to the little house here I'll show you that in a second <laughs> the, the next question I have and this is we're still on our way down to the little house um, let's see uh, cup rights uh, nice video I have one question and I've heard a lot of people ask this uh, I have one question about the lack of people in your video when you're filming where is everyone well to tell you the truth I try to be respectful of people and not shove the camera in their face is the basic thing so a lot of times I'll get started early in the morning and then when I walk through places like this I'll actually wait to make sure that there's no there's no people around and I'm particularly cautious of kids you know I don't like to have kids in there plus that when I originally talked to the villages about doing this filming because I try to do it respectfully that way I don't get in a lot of trouble with the villages and everything else they asked me that they don't mind doing it just so long as I don't do a couple of things one of those is use their logo make sure people don't know people know that I have nothing to do with the villages and that I don't run around shoving a camera in people's faces so I think I've done a pretty good job of that but let's take another look this is still on the way down to the little house and I think on the next question we should be there but if you look down in the waters down around here there's goose nesting which means they get a little hyper when you get near them and then also you'll see some fish floating around in here and there's our friend the goose watching me very closely and right up in the distance is the little tree house but you can see I think this is they call it the Italian area or something like that I'm not quite sure but we'll look at that in a second there's a lot more um, a lot more fountains and stuff down there for you to see but in about a second we're going to be up for the next comment and the next place which is this kind of little treehouse place yes that's exactly what I thought Italian water garden meadow garden which we'll check out and then we're about ready to go into the canopy cathedral treehouse and then also you have the import all important restrooms as, as we all know but this is a picture of the actual tree house and we're going to kind of go through the back here and check this out really kind of cool I like this place you guys see this in the winter yeah unbelievable the decorations and stuff they have in here You hear some water jingling around, that's my water bottle. And we are actually up top. And this looks around out there. Right where we were, that's right down there is the Italian water garden down there. But anyway, here's here's the next question. Oh, uh, let's see. What is uh Ronald writes, what is the thing I hear? about a bond if you're paying cash why do you need a bond the easiest thing for me to say is is to listen to the video that i did on bonds bonds got nothing to do with cash it has to do with the infrastructure i could spend an hour explaining the bond to you it doesn't make any difference whether you bought a house with a bond or without a bond the builder needs to pay for construction or infrastructure somehow you're going to pay for it it doesn't come free it's just the way they do it in the CDD. So I'll list the bond. Uh, what did I call it? Uh, the bond and taxes and stuff like that. I'll list that video down below. Please go watch it. Even if you live here, you should really understand how all that works. Here's another quick look. You're probably not going to be able to hear me right around here this is actually the Italian gardens I'll give you a shot of this 
This is, I, I call it the, the mini, mini fountains. And that one's not going off right there, but there's one that goes off in the middle. And like I said, it's pretty loud right here, so I'll probably walk right outside and do the next comment or questions. So they come on and off different ways. And that's what it looks like. They start going off, different fountains go off. And this is just a small area. If you've never seen Longwood, you'll understand when we get towards the end and we go to the observatory and the larger fountain area, exactly what it all looks like. But right now we're gonna walk down a path and head out towards the meadow. And I do this every morning, uh, not every morning, when I do my walks in the morning down here. Hang on, we'll get there. If I don't get out of breath first. To get down to the meadows, you kind of walk down this boardwalk right here. And it's kind of, and it's kind of funny because it kind of reminds me of some of the places down in the villages that have the little boardwalks. And this is this is a kind of a cool little pond right here because when it when it gets in bloom, it kind of gets all covered by a bunch of um, algae, and it starts to look. really kind of cool this whole area right here is a lot of times is bright green when it's when the algae's in bloom but we'll, we'll go out here and i'll do the next comment and question this is walking out into the big field area and i love this area like in the springtime when all the flowers or the wildflower stuff is in bloom but this is we'll kind of hike down these paths right here at each of the intersections like this you can see there's a path here I don't know how well you can see it on here like this. We're walking up towards the house right up there. There's little maps out that are along here. So we're right here. We came originally from all the way down in this area, came down around the parking or the, um, the Italian fountains. Now we're kind of walking out this way and we're going to go split off here and go up to here. Usually I take this long route around this way, but then we're going to come back down here and back down into the DuPont house area um, and then back up to here. This is, this is actually the DuPont house way down, down in this area. And then we're going to go look at another lookout. So it's kind of like these little tree fort houses, places all over the place. And then we're going to talk about the drains once we get up to the house. In the middle of your house, as one person questioned. This is right where I walked from out there, walked up the hill, you can see from way over there. And then this is the house right here. And this, this home has been here since the 1700s, early 1700s, and obviously has been revamped. Now this next question we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna show you the inside here for a second. And the next question we're going to talk about has to do with drains in the villages. Hopefully I don't run out of batteries here. And this is kind of like a little museum in here. Really, really some nice, nice photography. So, you know, I like photography. And I already met Jim in here. Jim's a volunteer do dozen, right? Yeah. You've been doing this long? Seven years. Seven years. So that's the way this, this place gets, no wonder it's so dark in here. Uh, that's the way this place keeps going with, uh, with great people like Jim being a uh, volunteer. And so when did you say this, this place opened, Jim? 2015. No, well, I mean that the home was built in- 1730. Seven, 1730 in, in a couple of different phases, right? Yes. And this was from the farm that sold it to DuPont? Yes, the Webb family. The Webb family sold it to them. So this was brought back to the way it is right now. Now, thanks, Jim. Yeah. And so the question I'm going to answer real quick for you guys is CC from OC. I don't know if it's Ocean City or not, but maybe New Jersey or Maryland. I'm looking at the new homes in the villages, and what is the drain in the middle of the floor? There's no drains in the middle of the floor here, that's for sure. <laughs> but the drains in the middle of the floor are not really drains. They're actually electrical outlets and that's what they're there for so that you have electrical power in the middle of the floor. I know it looks like a drain, but that's not what it is. And you definitely want to catch a ride up to, is it called what, Jim? Web Farmhouse. The, the Web Farmhouse, and they generally run rides up here from 
Uh, around noon till 5, 5.30 and back you can walk one way or go to get, get a ride both ways but worth coming to. Check at the desk before you uh, walk all the way up here and expect a ride back though because you want to make sure they're running. Anyway, that's it. We're going to go on to the next, uh, next question and we're going to walk all the way back down the hill. I'm not taking the bus. That was, a, that was a lot of fun visiting uh, with Jim, and there was another dose in there. I don't remember what the name was, but that was way up there, and I've just walked all this path, came all the way back here. It's kind of the short way for me. Here's a map of where I was, way up here. Came down like this, and right down over here right now. We're going to go take a trip up into the little lookout loft tree house, but usually when I do my walks, I go all the way up here back up there and come back down and then we're going to go over to the uh, I guess that's the DuPont house and uh, another there's another tree house over there but really fun little um, signs all over the place out here as you walk around kind of inform you of anything and there's other docents around and they're all trained so that's kind of fun with the uh, you can talk to just about any of them and we're just about ready to come up on this Oh, it's like a little tree house type thing. Hello. And during the Christmas time, these are all lit lit up out here, which is this this area is really nice during Christmas because this whole thing is lit up. And while while I'm on that, um, if you're planning on coming up here while the Christmas lights are up or the 4th of July or anything like that, you really need to make sure that you make reservations way in advance because members get priority on some things and it's not always open like every day and they're timed. So you really need to look in advance, but the Christmas time, well worth it. This is, boy, if I was a kid and had a tree house like this, this is where I'd be, and really kind of, kind of fun metal sculptures here. I'm not sure what they are. It looks like something out of a, a Disney-esque kind of thing. Some kind of horn or something like that, I guess. I don't know. Oh yeah, look at that. There you go. This one was written in by a couple of people from Karen and Organic RN, and it's regarding fertilizers and pets. I just did a video a little bit about chinch bugs and stuff like that. So if you're gonna put down the fertilizer on your lawns, make sure you read the directions regarding pets, animals, kids playing on there. It depends on what type of fertilizer, weed, weed uh, killer, that type of thing you're gonna actually put down on there. And you need to read the directions about how much time you have to have before you let your pets go out there. Some of the um, ones that you spray on, you just have to wait till it dries because it actually sticks to the grass. Some of the things that are powders. Also, people have asked questions about bifenthin and that type of thing with the bees. You need to read the directions once again, figure out what you're using. And that's why if you noticed last time I did about the chinch bugs, I did early in the morning. So you actually don't have the bees out foraging then. So just be um, considerate of the environment, try to pay attention to the runoff and read the directions. Anyway, we're up in the tree house. We're going on to the next place. It's getting hot out here. So I was just helping some people find a way around here because it can be a little confusing. But now we are actually up to the DuPont house. And this is a, a pretty cool area. And in the during Christmas time, this is completely decorated. Really absolutely gorgeous. And right outside here, they have a big fire pit and a bunch of people sitting around talking. But I'll show you the outside here. And many of the questions that I have next have to deal with kind of, I, I don't know, the rules and regulations of the villages. So it'll take a little bit and hopefully uh, we get some of these questions answered, some things solved because some people really have some misunderstandings about the deed restrictions. I lied. Um, it's gotten really crowded around here, so I really can't do a, um, I can't talk, but 
what I'll do is I'm gonna go in and show you the inside of the house really quick. And we'll go off on, a on somewhere and go sit and talk about some of these deed restrictions, anywhere from pets to deed restriction in general or whatever, but uh, people just don't quite have this down yet about the deed restriction because they don't understand the deed restrictions, they get really frustrated about everything. And I'm gonna, before I sign off and go look at the inside of this, inside of this house, cause it's really cool. If I forget to tell you during the Christmas, it's really cool looking, but you, you gotta understand the deed restrictions. You're living in a deed restricted place and it's gonna do nothing but frustrate you if you don't understand them. And it's gonna frustrate you about your neighbors if they don't understand them. So I'm gonna set you straight on a couple of these, especially with pets, because obviously from some of these questions people are getting the wrong answers even from agents this is going inside the house itself and it's actually really nice and cool in here and there's always a docent right here to tell you about things but as you can see i believe this was an addition built onto the house and I, I don't want to show you everything because then there'd be no reason for you to come here. But a lot of the stuff that's in here is kind of like a museum and all about the DuPonts and this area here. There's some, I'll call it memorabilia for lack of a better term. And it's actually pretty big in here. This is, I believe this was the kitchen. And this is where all the silver was kept. So that's it. That's about all I really need to show you here. And there's a whole nother side of the house and ovens, the radiators, but you can see this used to be the outside of the house and things added on here, but the docents will help you out and just give you another look at what's here. Like I said, really interesting. So we are gonna go out and I'm gonna show you where the chow house is and then we're getting really close to the observatory. I just wanted to show you this outdoor area. This is kind of an eating area, beer garden, that type of thing. But in here, there's kind of a small cafe. There's also a restaurant called 1906 that has very specific hours, very nice, but you need a reservation. So if you're planning on coming somewhere, you got, um, you have to make your reservations way ahead of time. And then also, um, if you do decide you're going to eat there, you definitely need to not only have reservations, but you need to um, have a ticket into the uh, Longwood Gardens also. But there is beer here and wine. Uh, I don't believe there's any mixed drinks. All that, all that talk of beer, I decided I figure I better uh, have one since I was over here. I, I think they made me do it. That was it. Yeah, that's me do it. Anyway, let's, uh, we'll, we'll, kind of, we'll kind of look at these really quick and I'm going to rifle through these and we're going to go over and look at the observatory and then the, uh, what they call a pump house and the bell tower and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll run through these pretty quick. Um, and Jerry writes, thanks Rusty, you're always a plethora of information. I'm hung up on the number of pets. Now I'm going to read the, through this whole thing. <clears throat> Let me explain the pet thing to you really quick. And you're going to hear me say this over and over and over and over again. Read the declarations. Each area is different. Now, there's kind of like, I'm going to move this camera down just a little bit. There's a thing going around where people have been saying um, that you're allowed two pets, but if you come with three, you can keep three and stuff. I've never seen that written anywhere. I think that uh, personally, if you know where that is, you put it down in the comments because I have certain, I've read all different areas. The majority of them say that you are allowed to have two pets. With that said, somehow that mysteriously disappeared. And I don't know whether it's on purpose in District 13. Now, I don't know what 14, 15, 17, 18, 920 districts are going to say. And the thing you have to be really careful of, District 1, 2, and 3 and those areas definitely have different things because that's when the area first started. They've been amended and so on and so on. So let me tell you, read the declarations, read the declarations because they're all different. 
All right, I get a bunch of negative things, and it's usually from people that are outside of the villages. They don't even live in the villages, and it's obviously because they don't have an understanding, and it's not their fault. They just look at it, and they hear all these things about these rules and regulations and stuff like that. The reason you came to the villages is because of the rules and regulations. That's what made it what it is. It's only the small percentage of people that decide that they don't need to follow them that kind of mess that up a little bit and cause frustration for other people. So here we go. Joe writes, it seems a bit like a villager doesn't actually own his own home. Control is given to the committee somewhere and dictates uh, that he can and can't do with his home. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. Yeah, and, and you're always going to hear me say, the villages is not for everybody. If you're the type of person that likes to live out on a farm with 20 acres, and if you want to leave an old rusty truck or you want to park your RV outside and stuff, the villages is definitely not for you. It's not. Have it as a vacation home or not. The basic concept of the villages is you got a bunch of people that are really social, they like to go out and they like to do things. And those things about acreage and stuff like that are not really important. If you got a bunch of money, you can move up north. I think there's five acre plots up there, up in the horse area, the equestrian area. That might be an option for you, but it's a little pricey. Uh, Ginger <laughs> writes, uh, do you still have an apartment in Pennsylvania? Do you still need to pay taxes? Uh, whether you're a renter or a landlord. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of different answers to this, but the basic concept of it is, um, if you go down and you watch my video on becoming a Florida resident, it will cover everything that I did regarding becoming a Florida resident, when I started, how I started that, what I did, that type of thing. But for me, I started to become, this year, a Florida resident. So as of that time, I don't pay Pennsylvania tax anymore simply because I don't have anything in Pennsylvania but a vacation apartment type of thing. I live mostly down in Florida, but that's one of those things that it depends on what your tax situation is and you have to consult somebody. For the basic idea, when you move to Florida, become a Florida resident, and if you listen to those things that I said on there about becoming a, a Florida resident, like you should fill out a declaration of domicile, that type of thing which people forget to do, don't do, those are the things that establish you as a Florida resident. Is any one, one, or whatever that is, I'm sure I probably got it right. And I, I got to kind of agree with this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this. Deed restrictions are a joke in the villages. I have a friend who lives there that is 53 years of age now and lives there for two years. 55 is the minimum age according to the deed restrictions, and they are not enforced. How can they force these restrictions if some are not followed to the letter? He is married and lives alone. Nobody above 55 on the property. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch of different ways that can happen. And if you also read the deed restrictions, once again, they're different for each area. If you read the deed restrictions, they actually talk about having um, the age restrictions and the developer can forgive those for some things and they do certain things. I can't go through that whole thing. But the basic concept for you to buy a new home there from the villages, you pretty much have to be 55 or above. But I have to, I have to agree that it's getting to a point, and this is a real, getting to be a real stickler with me, is the fact that the deed restrictions, they are just not, there, there, there's, there's a problem. It's gotten so big right now, and people aren't following the deed restrictions. They're not reading the deed restrictions. They're blowing the deed restrictions off a lot of times, and they don't understand when they do that, their neighbors walk around, and a lot of them with their guts turned because they don't like what's happening. They don't understand why they have to follow the deed restrictions and they walk by somebody that has, and I'm making stuff up, has, has a big Mr. Peanut in their front yard and just because nobody's reported them, all of a sudden that makes it okay. Well, it's not. And you know, when we, my feeling is we, we all agreed to be neighbors and move to the villages. And when we did that, we said to the people that live there already, we said, hey, I'm going to abide by these rules, I want to be part of your community. And if you move there in the community and you just disregard them, especially if you do it on purpose, then, I, you, you know, I, I got to say, you know, shame on you. You shouldn't be doing that because you're kind of dissing your neighbors. And that's all I'm going to say about that for this second. And you may hear me rant about it because it is is my thing. Um, and and, and I, I'm seriously thinking about taking this on as my thing to champion while I'm down there and to try to find an answer for it.
I don't know what it is yet, but it may be something that I want to work with. Maybe I'll go talk to the VHA about it. Anyway, on to the next one. Here, here, here's one. Okay, from this is from Glow C. It's and and this is where you know I know Glow C is not going to like my answer on this. She's going, not going to like what I say. But the thing is, is you know if I said it in any other way, I'd be lying. But she writes. Uh, my pre-existing home was bought with two cement angels. It's kind of funny. I, I think the previous owner was a retired nun. Um, she was there for 20 years. Yes, it is good to comfort someone um, when possible. I'm not sure. There's a group of people that go around and find the joy in finding simple violations. Someone's bed was too close to the road, meaning a gardening thing, that type of thing. Uh, out of anger, the owner walked up to up up the block and found fault with each and every home. I recently read that an owner's driveway was two inches too wide. Um, what happens with that? Not cool. Well, here's here's the problem, and I go back to the other statement that I said. Um, unfortunately, I got a baby crying next to me. Sorry. Um, the, uh, uh, unfortunately, this is the problem with disregarding the rules, is you create the turmoil in this. You create the turmoil. The biggest thing I can say is talk to ARC, okay? Talk to the people that deal with the deed restrictions. Find out what they are. Read them. If you don't understand what they say, this is the type of turmoil that you cause by doing this. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. And this is two real examples. And, and, I, the, I, the, you can tell this frustrates me because it's really, it, it is your job when you buy a home. If I was buying a home, a used home, I would make the people sign that they say that there's no deed restriction problems on there. So they would need to disclose anything that they had done. So if you move into the house afterwards, this is me, but you know, not everybody's going to do this. If they have problems or they've done something to the house afterwards and they didn't have it approved by ARC, they need to disclose that. And that is on the person that's buying it and shame on the agent for not doing that. They should be up on that. I hate to say that, but I used to have my real estate license, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. Get a statement disclosing that. Here's the thing. If you go and do something, anything outside of your house, just takes two seconds to go to ARC to get it approved. If you do something, just like this guy said right here, and you don't get it approved and it's two inches over and you sell your house, I would personally, I'm not an attorney, I don't know, but me personally, I'd go after the person that did it, that sold it, because it's assumed that you're buying a house that is in compliance, right? So this, this to the point, this is exactly what happens when you disregard the deed restrictions and you do something. When you do it two inches over, there's a reason why it's set at a certain length. And once you go over that, shame on you for doing it. You need to do that. Now, I'm going to tell you two stories here real quick. I have a good friend and he moved into his house. He just did all of his landscaping and stuff. He filed with ARC. He did all these things that were supposed to be done. and. I look out onto his yard and we're kind of chuckling about this because we were talking about deed restrictions and he's got this, I'll call it a tchotchke sitting in the yard. And I said to him, I said, I said, you got read all those, you did all those deed restrictions stuff and I said, you got that thing in your yard. And it's a thing, I'll call it a cement thing in his yard. And I said to him, I said, did you get that approved? And he goes, well, no. He said, I looked across the lawn and the guy across the street had one, so I figured it was okay. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you may not think it's a big deal, right? But the person that lives next to you may think it's a big deal, and that's what gut wrenches them because now they've got to deal with their neighbor that has done something outside the deed restrictions. They can't do that type of thing, and they're going, I don't know why the other person was able to do that. So, like I said, you may think that you're just doing something and nobody is paying attention to it or nobody cares, but I promise you, when you do something, the neighbors notice, they know it, and then there's people like him that go, well, that person over there did it. Let me explain to you something. In our neighborhood, there is one house that we have the fences in between the houses, in between the villas. When you do that, you, the house that has actually got the gate, the other person still owns two feet onto that property, and the people that that live on the other side of that fence where you have to go through a gate to get there, 
they don't realize that two feet of that property on the other side it belongs to, and this is on every house, but the majority of them, belongs to the other person on the other side of that fence. And they go in and they do things to that part of the property. They don't realize that they're not supposed to do anything, change the grade, change the drainage or anything. And anything they do that causes flooding, termites, plant plants there, attach things to the house, they are actually responsible, as far as I can tell, and I've been told by an attorney, I'm not an attorney, so don't go by me, that they're responsible for the damage that happens because they disregarded this type of thing. Now, if you're, like I said, if you're going to do something outside the house, go and get approval for it. They're going to tell you whether it's okay to do it or not. That's it. It has nothing to do with being nice to your neighbor or anything else. We all move to the villages for a reason, and we move there. What makes the villages are those deed restrictions and not just people flying off the, the handle and putting the Oscar Mayer Wiener, Wiener Mobile or Mr. Peanut in their front yard. Okay, God, I hate getting off on those deed restriction things, but I just keep getting stuff over and over and over again. Let's go on to the next one. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is let's take a walk right now because I need a breather. I need some more beer. I haven't even drank my beer. And let's go out and look at some really cool places left here at Longwood Gardens. God, I'm betting my blood pressure's up. <laughs> God, I wonder if there's anybody behind me uh, doing photo bombs back there. So, so okay, I had my beer. I'm a little better now. I've gotten gotten off my ramp, but you can tell that that's one thing I'm pretty passionate about. And um, you know, the, the other thing that, that that people talk about is the the process of being anonymous when they report things. I still to this day I'm waiting for somebody to tell me why they need to know who reported them. I mean, what, I mean, what's the difference really? I mean, are you going to go beat them up? Are you going to go harass them? And, and I'll tell you what, I've literally seen people that were friends and once they find out that somebody reported them, they're no longer friends. And the thing is, if you just comply with the deed restrictions that you agreed to when you moved in, there is no problem. There's really not. It's, it's a great place to live. I love living there. And I, I assume that everybody followed the deed restrictions. And when they found out they weren't following them, they complied with them and, and there wasn't a problem. But obviously it seems to be. So I think personally, I think, um, I, I, I honestly believe and maybe, maybe, like I said, I'll take this on, I'm, I'm thinking about it more and more, is that they need to be revamped. And I think they need to find a way to allow people to express themselves, possibly in their yard, and they need to take away the animate, uh, and yeah, what, you know what I mean, the doing it anonymously, and try to figure out a way to do it, maybe the way a lot of HOs, A's go. And I have a few ideas, and a few experiments that I'm going to try myself and I'll see what happens. But anyway, check out where we are. Bunch of smiley faces. Yeah. <laughs> see, there you go. There's somebody that doesn't mind being on camera. <laughs> so just, just like the house we were up, everybody's really friendly. Like every, everybody's really friendly here. I love it here. Yeah, right. I, I just had a beer on here, so. Yeah, so so I'm okay. Now we're going to go into one of my favorite places. Actually, yeah, the conservatory. Actually, during Christmas, this place is where you, where you want to be. So, thanks for thanks for the dancing part. <laughs> yeah. Now this this place is actually amazing. Check this out. Look at this. This is this is what this. If you can imagine this during Christmas this place is phenomenal I, I, I just incredible so this is one of those areas where I try to take the camera around and I try to keep people's faces out of everything but this during uh, Christmas this every single piece of everything 
is decorated around here. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of jump around because I don't want to take too long in here. You're probably gonna want to come see this yourself, but uh, it's big and there's a lot to explore in here. And before they started to do um, the renovations, there was definitely a lot more to see. So that, that's, that's um, we just got to walk in here when this is actually going, when they're actually playing the organ. And we're walking behind the organ right now. I'm going to show this to you. This is incredible. And if you're lucky enough to get a docent back here, when you're back here to talk to, it's, it's pretty amazing. I don't know whether you can see this on here. This is sugar pie, and that's popular. If you look at the pipes, they're, they're made out of varying alloys of zinc, lead, and tin. And if you change the... That's oh. mine. Just trying to make sure it's not mine. <laughs> it has a mind of its own sometimes, particularly playing things. Get all these. This is pretty pretty amazing. These are all obviously the big pipes right here. Well, I'll let you come take a look at this when 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 you're down here. It's actually pretty cool. I've never been in here when they're actually playing it. So I'll walk back out here. Now you can imagine this was Dupont's place, man. This is where he hung out. I'm telling you, amazing, amazing place right here. Now, we're gonna walk out to the other side of the, of the building, and this is probably, I would say, one of the most kind of a, a amazing areas when um, Christmas is around. And so this is all, this used to be like a dancing floor. They can empty this out. This whole area right here, I'm gonna see whether I can find a, a picture on the internet to throw up here to give you an idea. I have some pictures, but this is uh, this whole thing during Christmas is completely decorated and I'm going to show you this I haven't seen this yet so these are the ponds out here and I'm hoping you can see that and this is the whole new area that they're building so those ponds are all filled usually with all kinds of like lily pads and that type of thing this whole area is closed off but there's a whole area in there that uh, during Christmas and stuff and there's like part of the DuPont house and uh, memorabilia from there. Hello. And I'll show you this one little area here and we're going to go outside. We're almost at the end and I'll show you that I, I want to show you the fountains because the fountains are the biggest thing here. We haven't even hit the, the, the most the most amazing thing. Back in here in this area there's all kinds of uh, orchids and oh god all kinds of stuff like that but anyway i'll show you the outside here and then we'll go see the pump house and the fountains and then we got a couple more questions to ask or answer or the, yeah whatever i said i did have a beer i wanted to show you this part i forgot all about this because it's it's the kids part it's it's the children's garden i don't i don't know whether i can capture this but they have like these little things shoot shoot things up and there's stuff that kind of fires off and there's little plants. I mean kind of kind of the things kids would enjoy. I'll see whether I can catch some of these things. Like I don't I don't want to really show identifiable kids' faces, but um, re really kind of a fun. Everything's smaller. For, for the kids and that type of thing. Things they would enjoy, little little things they can play with. And don't don't pass this place up if 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 you're up in this area. 
all kinds of like upper walkways and stuff like that. Anyway, I forgot totally about that because like, well, I'm a kid at heart, but I, I kind of forgot that. But okay, on to the outside. Just so you understand what's going on here, there's a huge, huge renovation and I'll show you from down below. But these are the things that they're building. They have a big billboard here and showing all types of stuff. This is the observatory right here, or the, the yeah, thanks. It's the place where they grow plants. <laughs> Jeez. But anyway, this is where we were over here, but this whole area over here is all going to be new. This will give you an idea of how big the construction is that's going on here. And I think once this happens and once it's through, I'll come back up and do a uh, video for everybody so you can actually see what's going on. Because it, it's, I don't think they build as fast as the villages does, but it's definitely going to be interesting when it's all done. I've been through all this before, before they started doing the reconstruction on it, but I'll ask these folks down here when the next show is and maybe we'll catch it. I just walked around the uh, conservatory or whatever it's called. We're walking over by the bell tower. So I'm going to see whether we can pick this up right now. But this is really a cool area. And I want you to check this out. I'm not going to say anything. I'll just let you listen to the bells. But I just found out in about five minutes from now, the fountains are going to go off. So I'll show you that afterwards. So luckily we hit this just on time. Okay, we're going inside. That was cool. Perfect timing, you would think. I'm just leaving the bells. They're still chiming back there. They chime for a while, like 15 minutes or so. But on your way out, we're on our way out to go see what this place is really known for, kind of like Bellagio type fountains. But in underneath the, where the fountains are, they actually have, it's almost like kind of like a museum. And they had a guy come in here that does some nice photography. And there's all the, the pumps and that type of stuff. Obviously, a lot of these have been re replaced. These are just display pumps, but they kind of show the you know, way everything was built. It's kind of worth a read. Um, kind of a fun little area in here. And this is actually underneath the building. So now, we're going to, let me see that we've got one more question here. Hang on a second, maybe we'll do the last question right in here. So I want to read this last, uh, it's not the last one, but getting close to the end here. And Paul E. PV writes, uh, deed restrictions are not just for aesthetic reasons. Yard ornaments can become missiles during bad weather like hurricanes. Yeah, that's the thing. I think I said this in my hurricane thing is that people don't realize that, you know, when these hurricanes come rolling in, watch that video because it's going to give you an app. 
to look at for the hurricanes when they're coming in. But you know, when you're leaving town and stuff like that, do not leave these lawn ornaments, chairs and stuff like that out in your yard. Put them away, put them in your garage, stick them inside the lanai. They may even get blown around in there because it doesn't take very much to lift one of these things off the ground and throw it around and we easily can get 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds and not even have a hurricane. So, and, and not only that, we have like tornadoes that get spun off of these hurricanes and stuff like that. So please don't leave these things out in the yard. It's a very good point he has there. We got one more uh, kind of thing to talk about, but I really want to get off and show you these fountains. It's going to go off here in a few minutes and really something to see during the holiday seasons. And 4th of July is amazing, but you got to get tickets way ahead of time. Anyway, let's jump jump up top. I think you'll be really amazed at, at this. Run, run, run. Oh, you can hear him firing off. Look, you can see it way up in the air. And we're gonna try to go up and get right next to the fountains. Hang on here for a second. You can hear him going up there. This is my version of running up the steps. I am not Rocky. Oh man, we even got a rainbow. How cool is this? So this is actually a smaller show, but when the big shows go off, right out in this area, this whole area out here has tons of uh, different fountains that go off. And there's also, if you look at these ones that are coming up right over here, there's also fire and that type of thing. So this show is really a smaller show and uh, when you when you come and see the larger shows there's like one at nine i think 9 15 tonight it's the full-blown deal so a lot of this is lit up a lot of fire and that type of thing but when this is all done up here this is going to be one cool place i'm just kind of sitting out here this big grass area just kind of hanging out nice and cool out of the sun and this has been kind of a whirlwind trip i have no idea how this is going to turn out what's what's going on but i'm going to hit this last question and this is a big one dr j writes and uh, a lot of this came about on these deed restrictions place and i think people don't understand they hear like these kind of they're minimal things i mean it's not that much they're just asking you don't put things in the yard you, you can't build close to the street because there's actually reasons there's county reasons and laws it has nothing to do with the villages but dr j writes the more i hear about the rules and regulations and the more and more negatives i guess i'm shocked at a place that remains so popular as it is rusty knowing what you know would you still go through with buying the house in the villages do the positive outweigh the many negatives let me tell you without a doubt spoiler alert yes and what people don't understand is because of these little things to not to to just check the deed restrictions and make sure that whatever you're doing is within those deed restrictions makes the village villages what it is let me say if you're a person that needs to live on a farm and have five acres and if you want to have rvs and rusted cars out in your yard or old farm stuff it's probably not the place for you to live that's for sure but i want to live a certain lifestyle and i want to be very active i want to know that when i come back home that my neighborhood's clean i'm not going to worry about joe working on his car or parking a big rv that when i want to walk out on the street or parking a commercial vehicle like you know one of these big electric trucks or something like that in their yard because when people drive down the street that ruins the value of the neighborhood i don't care what you say i had my real estate license and we used to tell people could you ask your neighbors not to park those cars right there when they come to buy the house so all these things affect what is there whether they're small or large small things breed into big things so the answer is absolutely positively yes and one of the big reasons is one because of those restrictions I kind of and hope that the neighborhood remains the way it is Two, the people that I found there are absolutely 
amazing. I mean, I love the people in the villages. The people that I've met are so friendly. It doesn't matter what race, what color, uh, what, whatever. It just doesn't make any difference. Everybody's there to have a good time, relax. And to be honest with you, people that kind of spout off stuff about, you know, uh, politics and stuff like that, I've seen people just turn away. They may have their own vision of what politics should be, but people generally, they just don't want to hear it. You know, they want to go out and have fun. They've dealt with that crap their whole life and they're over it. So, um, I hope I didn't rant too much about the deed restrictions, but I think it's really important, at least in my mind, that people try to follow them because your neighbors are trying to follow them. And to me, it's part of being, being part of the villages. We all knew what we were getting into, and if we didn't, well, you, you kind of learned that that's the way it is, but there's no reason to break those rules and regulations. Um, are, are there things that I don't like about the villages? Sure. And maybe I'll make a video, but honestly, I kind of get tired of, uh, you know, people making those videos. This is what I don't like. This is what I do like. I know it's good clickbait, but it's just not my, my thing. Maybe I will do one because people keep asking me what I don't like. But anyway, um, people, the, uh, I think for the most part, I think the developers have done an outstanding job. Is there a negative to some of the things they've done? Yeah, I think so. But they're, you know, I, I think that in, in the, the, the basic sense, I think they're trying to do the right thing. And, you know, they're, they're steering the Titanic down the street and they're experimenting with things and everything's, are, you know, are not going to be perfect and not suit everybody. And unfortunately, when things don't suit people, um, they tend to be the loudest and the other people are going about living their lives. But uh, yeah, I hope this has been entertaining. Uh, I love Longwood. It's a, a great place to visit up here. In, it's in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. And there's uh, hotels and stuff to stay around here. But like I said, if you're going to come here, it's not during, during the week, I think it's fine and, and stuff like that. If you don't have a membership, I have a membership but you definitely want to make uh, reservations during uh, show times, like really busy times and stuff like that, and they'll let you know because they're not only reservations for the day or buying tickets for the day, but they're also doing um, timed. So like if your ticket says 7.30, you gotta be there either from seven to eight, you know, somewhere in there, you, you can use your time ticket anyway. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this all fits together. I have no idea. I've never done anything like this before. It's been fun doing it because I love Longwood. Anyway, I will either see you back here on YouTube or I will see you down in the villages. You have a wonderful day and follow those deed restrictions. <laughs> oh God, oh, people are going to hate me for this. I know it. <laughs>